Hey guys, Joe here, Seattle Coffee Gear. Snuck back into Gail's space. I'm back, at least for a while. Uh, today, I'm here to talk about the mighty world of pressure profiling, what it means for you, and why it's fun, important, and how I snuck in through the back door. The code is 6911. So, pressure profiling. R60V new machine. We have one down in Portland. It's a lot of fun to play around on, which is why I get to talk about it, because I've been playing around on it a lot, if you can't tell. Uh, pressure profiling is the, well, basically, it's the ability to change your extraction pressure while your coffee is brewing. Uh, this used to happen manually, just because of the physics of springs and how old spring piston lever machines worked. Uh, you would compress a spring, and as it would decompress, you would have a lot of pressure while you have all of that stored energy. That would then force its way through your coffee, and it would lessen as that spring becomes longer. Uh, a lot of people say that old espresso machines, those lever machines, make some of the best coffee in the world, and it is believed that is because of pressure profiling. Uh, these days, we have really cool vein pumps that do that for us, which you can program, like on the R60V. The V stands for vein. Uh, so today, we're just going to talk about it a little, brew some espresso, and see why it matters. Uh, first and foremost, I was playing around on Gale's R60 to mimic one of those spring machines. So what's going to happen is we're going to pull a shot of espresso, and it's going to have a really low pre-infusion for a long time, about 10 seconds at two bars. Then we're ramping it up to that classic nine bar extraction when all that high pressure water is going to be beating up our coffee, dissolving it, putting it in our cup. And as soon as it starts to really blonde, uh, the pressure is going to drop to six bars just to slow down so that our water now spends more time in our coffee Allowing, allowing the universal solvent to travel through coffee, dissolving more of it, and getting that in our cup. Uh, it will allow for a nice, heavily bodied shot of espresso that'll be really syrupy without a lot of water and have uh, a lot of punch to it. Uh, it's quite delightful. Right now, I've got Elm Roasters, Ethiopia, Yorko, Yuko, Yukro in the Fausto fun grinder. Uh, they kind of say it tastes like black tea and watermelon, and it's really fun to drink an espresso that tastes a lot like black tea and watermelon. And without further ado. All right, simple, easy, 35 second extraction based off of an old lever machine. Uh, the way I came up with the timing of the profile was what tasted good. Uh, I sort of watched the old lever machines that are around the Portland area, talked to the baristas there and figured out how they are extracting their coffee, brought it back to my store and came up with this. Mazel tov. a lot of flavor in a very short sip. Uh, it's quite jarring, but not in a bad way. This is a really light Ethiopian. It's a single origin, which I generally don't like as espresso, just because I really like them as pour over, as we know. Uh, so why, why bother making espresso when I could have all the pour over I want? Uh, but that is, kind of tastes almost like an iced, tea sweetened with watermelon. Uh, it would make a nice latte, just because lattes are delicious, and uh, it's a lot of flavor. Profile one, based off of an old profile. It's a place to start. 
uh, it's essentially the foundation of modern espresso was extractions like that. The next profile we're going to do is a very modern version. We're going to have a four second pre-infusion at four bars and then ramp up to the classic nine bars for just the rest of the extraction. Uh, playing around earlier, we found out that it tasted best at 40 seconds and above, and we're going to see what that does. So hold on one second, we'll be right back. A little bit more classic looking with that espresso, or modern classic, nouveau. It's certainly smoother. It's a lot less jarring in its flavor. Uh, it's also less intense. So if I were to make a latte out of this, I think I would like that first flavor profile more. Uh, I would get more of that flavor of good milk through that first profile because I'm not diluting it with the remnant water that's in here. Uh, however, this is a lot nicer to just sip on. Uh, that watermelon flavor that is really natural in this uh, coffee, it lingers in the mouth nicely with this version, whereas the other one, it had a, a slightly steeper cutoff in flavor, whereas even now it's still going on and I like it a lot. Uh, two basic profiles to start with. If you have an espresso machine that is capable of pressure profiling, I do suggest playing around on it. Uh, you give yourself a foundation. You can either try that intense, heavily bodied shot of the past or the newer, smoother shot of futures, uh, future espresso and play around. Like Figure out what makes the best pre-infusion for you how long pre-infusion should be for you, and then how long your extraction should be. And keep it simple. You have to play around. There is no right answer. If we put a much darker coffee in here, something that is naturally softer, uh, it will dissolve more readily. Therefore, my extraction will be quicker by nature of what espresso is. So that first profile might work better just because it is designed to dissolve more coffee better, uh, faster. And you know, if we have denser, lighter roasted coffee, like this Ethiopian, uh, some blends out there are very light, very dense, high altitude coffees, uh, a longer profile might be better for them because it's denser. There's more cellulose structure to the coffee bean, so we need to figure out how to dissolve it properly to make it taste good for you. Uh, it's really easy to pull a terrible shot with pressure profiling, which is why I suggest starting at either a standard nine bar extraction with pre-infusion if you want, or figure out your style of old school lever style machines. Uh, we were doing two bars at 10 seconds, uh, nine bars at 17 seconds, and then finishing with a six second extraction to get the yield we wanted. I stopped it at 35 seconds on that run. It tasted great. Uh, as does this one, which we stopped at 45 seconds. So play around, have fun. In the comments below, if you have the pressure profiling capabilities, tell us what you like, what coffees you're drinking, what they taste like and uh, have fun. See you next time.